Hi folks, Bryony Thomas here. I'm the author of Water Type Marketing. I'm just jumping on to ask you a question, which is when did you last look at your sales forecast? Um, being as this is, we're just literally into February, I'm willing to bet that a few of you put together a 2018 sales forecast in January. Go on, did you? Bet you did. When are you going to look at it again? So when in your business year do you pick up your sales forecast and do something with it? That's exactly the question that I asked in this week's article over on our blog. It's a three minute, 30 second read, I'm told. And I talk through um, how, uh, so we've just had a bunch of people join our master plan program. We always do in January. It's kind of new year. Let's, uh, marketing's my new thing. Um, and, um, one of the first things we get people to do is take a look at their sales forecast and to ask themselves a few key questions. And we were having a really um, interesting conversation with uh, one of our master planners about uh, about whether or not what they'd put on their sales for forecast was even possible, as in did they actually have enough days in the year um, to sell the amount that they were planning to sell to hit their forecast. So there was, a, so we said, you know, the first uh, the first thing to do with a sales forecast is to ask yourself some sanity check questions to see whether it is indeed feasible and to keep asking that and review uh, uh, and review that. And then the other is to say that, you know, you really need to be picking your sales forecast up um, at regular intervals. Uh, when is that for you? I would imagine as uh, on the post, I said, I bet Amazon probably do this hourly. Uh, for most businesses, a monthly sales forecast review is probably sensible. But it, what do you do? I mean, do you look at it and just say, oh, my goodness, we're under or oh, my goodness, we're over? And um, what I suggest you do is that you have some ready made trigger actions. So sit down right now and say, what would I do if we were? 10% or more over target? Would What would I do if we were 10% or more below target? And I've put together a little checklist of the types of things that might kick in in either of those circumstances. Um, and being over target is probably the one that people don't prepare for because they think, oh, well, that'll be good news, you know, nice problem to have. Um, but if you disappoint, you know, if you're, if you're swamped with new business inquiries and you can't give them brilliant service, then it probably isn't a great problem to have because now you've got a bunch of people who are a bit disgruntled um, and and uh, the word of mouth effect may not be goodwill at all. It may be the opposite of that. So I've put down a little checklist of the sorts of things that um, kind of trigger actions that can kick in uh, if you are above or below your sales target. On, and I'd suggest at least a monthly um, is sensible for everyone. We've also talked about pattern spotting. This is very much about rhythm. So businesses have rhythms. Um, and unless you're um, aware of the rhythm in your business, it can come as a bit of a shocker. So maybe um, you sell loads in the run up to Christmas, or maybe you sell very little in January or over the summer or whatever it might be. But if um, if you kind of haven't spotted that this is a pattern or a rhythm, you might be sitting there in January going, oh, my goodness, I'm never going to be able to pay my mortgage. Um, uh, but actually, it's happened every year. And so maybe January should just be when you when you pause, when you take breath, when you do some planning. So when you uh, so you should always keep a historic record of what you thought you were going to sell and what you actually did so that you can see when in your year you're over or under predicting so that you can plan better in terms of resource and energy and, and what you do at different times of the year that's appropriate to the rhythm of your business or indeed some actions that might change the rhythm of your business. So some promotions or stuff to alleviate that. And then the thing that I think is prob probably the most interesting, particularly for the sorts of businesses that I love working with, is that having a sales forecast um, and a variance report over time and a record of what action you took builds up a really compelling narrative about you and your commercial acumen. So if you are going to go for um, investment, if you're pitching for investment or you're looking for someone to buy your business, if you have a record of the, the sales forecast that you had over time and you can demonstrate that you hit them or when you didn't, what action you took, that's a really compelling document to have in a pitch conversation or um, when somebody's valuing your business because it starts to help them to understand you as an entrepreneur, um, how smart you are, because actually, um, in many ways, whilst, whilst it may look lovely to have a sales forecast where um, you hit every uh, in every sales goal you ever um, set, you hit. Yeah, but then were you pushing it hard enough? 
Um, have you actually been tested? Is this business just riding a wave? So actually having a narrative around the sales forecast you set and what actually happened, what you did about it can be really compelling. So do head over to watertypemarketing.com forward slash blog. It's the, the most recent post um, and it's called, is it time to dust off your sales forecast? Go and have a look. I'd love to hear what you do with your sales forecasts, um, whether you've just done one, whether you've got some other ideas to add to how to make it a living document, um, or, you know, if you want to, to admit that, you know, maybe it isn't an active tool in your business and maybe it will be now. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Cheers then. Bye. <laughs>